Greetings and God's blessings. This is Father John Karapi with another episode of Weekly Wisdom. Uh, this week I'm going to talk about uh, something that fits right into uh, Lent since we're filming this during Lent. I'm going to talk about the sign of the cross. Uh, this is one of the most common sacramentals in the Catholic Church. Uh, we do it uh, pretty much um, subconsciously by now. We've been doing it, most of us, since we were little kids. And, you know, the sign of the cross is simply where you, you uh, take your, in the Latin rite, in the Western Church, <clears throat> take your right hand, and uh, you go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, in the Eastern churches, the Byzantine Church and the other Eastern rites, it's a, they have a little more symbolism involved. Uh, it's a little bit more intricate. Uh, they take the um, three fingers of the right hand uh, and then the, the two fingers, and they make the, the three fingers reminds you of the Trinity. Okay, symbolism is very important. That those three fingers remind you of the Trinity that you bless yourself with. And the other two fingers uh, represent the two natures of Christ, uh, both divine and human. Uh, in general practice, uh, in the Roman Rite, uh, we're not quite so uh, uh, um, intense with the symbolism, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, you know, as Pope John Paul II said, the church has to learn uh, how to breathe with both lungs. Uh, one lung is the Western Church, and the other is the Eastern. And the Eastern Rite Churches are very important, and they bring us a rich tradition, uh, and uh, it, it would be very good for us um, to learn more about the, the Eastern Rites, the Byzantine Rite, Maronite Rite, and so forth. But the sign of the cross, it's it just so simple, so common, for us, it, it's just second nature to us to make that sign of the cross. But what does it mean? Why do we do it? Uh, I'll tell you the reason, one of the reasons I'm, I'm doing this segment on the sign of the cross. A friend of mine uh, mentioned that um, <clears throat> a relative of his was going to a certain private school, and uh, she there encountered a, a kind of, um, oh, a religious... Um, uh, perspective that d disturbed her, uh, and they were saying, oh, Catholics, when they make the sign of the cross, they're, uh, they're idolaters, and they're crucifying Christ again. Um, that's really, you know, I respect everybody's religion. I really do. And I perfectly respect their right to practice any religion they like. I really do. Uh, but their religion is one religion, ours is another. And that's, the, you know, you don't have to get in arguments. Oh, well, you belong to a different religion. That's fine. You can believe anything you want. But in my religion, we believe this. I'm going to, in a very short period of time, try to give you a little synthesis of why we believe what we do about the sign of the cross. Now, first and foremost, it's the sign of our salvation. The cross is the sign of our salvation. You know, when the eternal word, the second person of the blessed trinity, Jesus, when the eternal word became flesh and dwelt among us, why did he do that? Now, that's a question theologians have asked uh, and debated uh, throughout the ages. You know, all kinds of hypotheses can be posited. All kinds of ideas can be thrown around. But the bottom line is... Uh, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus took, assumed a human nature and became like one of us in everything except sin for one reason. Redemption. Salvation. Oh, you can speculate about all kinds of things. But the bottom line is redemption. He assumed that human nature ultimately to take it to the cross. Uh, the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ is the way we enter into heaven. That's the way we can be, stand before the Father. It's the only way our sins could have been forgiven. Oh, God could have done it any number of ways, but he chose to do it that way. So, 
When we make the sign of the cross, we are professing our faith in two essential things. Number one, the, the fundamental belief uh, of the Catholic Church, the Trinity. God is one God. There's only one God. And that one God is three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, we can say certain things about that, but that's a mystery. You can say, well, how can it be? He's one and three. That's a contradiction. No, it's not. That's not a contradiction. That's a paradox. And if you want to do some, uh, some study and research, then you, you research the difference between a, 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 um, a, a, an opposition or a contradiction. That's one thing, a contradiction. And, and on the other hand, You've got a paradox. That's something different. Is God one God? Yes, there's only one God. Is that one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Absolutely. That's what we believe. That's part of the doctrine of the faith, and that's the most fundamental of our belief. So when we make the sign of the cross, we are professing our belief in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are signing ourselves with the Most Holy Trinity. And what else? Well, it's in the sign of the cross. That's what it's called, sign of the cross. We're crossing ourselves. We're making that, that, that symbolic gesture in the form of a cross. And the cross is the sign of our salvation. Why is this important, and why do people misunderstand it? Well, it's important because we're expressing two of our most fundamental, most essential beliefs in the Catholic Church. We are not angels, as you know. We are not disembodied spirits. We have not only a spiritual dimension, uh, a psychological dimension, we also have a bodily or corporeal dimension. We have a body, you know, sense perceptible. Sense perceptible signs are necessary for human beings, okay? Uh, maybe they wouldn't be if we were merely angels, but because we have a body and because sense perceptible things are so important, we use signs and symbols. Why? To help to raise us to God. Uh, the body, uh, unlike what certain heretics thought throughout history, the body is not evil. It's God's creation. So it's good and it's holy. And, and so bodily signs, sense perceptible signs, like the sign of the cross or pictures, holy picture, the crucifix, statues of Jesus, the Blessed Mother, the saints, that helps us. They're sense perceptible, right? You can see them. You can touch them. Those sense perceptible images or signs help to raise our heart and mind to the God who cannot be seen, the God who is pure spirit. And so uh, they're necessary. Now, unfortunately, there have been from, oh, the, almost the, the very beginning, or, or uh, at least uh, after several centuries of Christianity, there were people who misunderstood this. Most people more or less have goodwill, I think. But quite frequently, they misunderstand things. Now, on the other hand, some people don't have goodwill, and they're just flat malicious. But, you know, uh, I give people the benefit of the doubt, and they say, well, look, they just don't understand what we believe. More than once, I've had uh, discussions with persons who say things uh, based on misunderstanding. Uh, and I, I don't hold that against them. You know, they may have been told that, brought up that way. It was a cultural thing. Oh, you Catholics worship images. No, we don't. Yes, you do. No, we don't. Yes, you do. No, we don't. And then, you know, the final uh, uh, um, retort to that is, I have a doctrine in Catholic theology that I earned the hard way by sitting in university classrooms for 12 years. I know what we believe. You get a doctorate in Catholic theology? What do you know about it? Nothing. You don't know anything about it. You're saying things that are born of misunderstanding or ignorance. Now, we 
worship God alone. Okay? That's one of the first tenets of the Catholic faith. We worship God alone. Who's that God? That's one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, yeah, but, but you, you worship images, statues, pictures. No, we don't. No, we do not. We respect them. Why would we have a statue of Jesus representing, say, the Sacred Heart of Jesus? Or a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary? Or a picture of St. Francis? You know, or, or the Archangel Michael or Gabriel? Why? Why would we do that? It reminds us of the ones we love. We don't worship that image of wood or stone, that picture. No, that's like saying because you carry a picture of your mom in your wallet, you're an idolater. No, you're not. You carry the picture of your mom. You don't worship that picture. You love your mom. You like to look at the picture and be reminded of your mom. We need sense perceptible signs to help us. Why? We have a body. We can see, we can hear, we can touch. We require that as human beings. So un unfortunately, people misunderstand this. You know, they, they, they just say, oh, you worship. We don't worship that. We worship God alone. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The pictures, you know, the, the, the cross, the, the crucifix, and the sign of the cross. Okay, that's a symbol, a sign that helps to raise our heart and mind to God. It reminds us of the most holy trinity, the most fundamental tenet of our belief in the Catholic Church, and it reminds us of the mystery of redemption, which is symbolized by the cross. All right, now this is nothing new, as I said. Now, you know, I'm always interested in your education. You know, that's why I've done what I do uh, for over 20 years now. Uh, I want you to learn your faith. Uh, but in a little half-hour segment like this, obviously, I can't say everything there is to say about any topic. We try to uh, synthesize and condense, distill it, and present you the essence of a certain subject. And uh, we can do that. But uh, I want to encourage you to study on your own. That's why I've always encouraged you to read the Bible, uh, to read the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which will help you to understand sacred scripture. I'm going to give you a, a reading assignment if you're interested in this topic. You know, this goes back, you, if you want to have insight into this, um, this argument, if you will, uh, look up iconoclasm or the iconoclast heresy. This is nothing new. Uh, there's a great article in the Catholic Encyclopedia. You can just go on the internet, and if you're watching me, obviously uh, you have uh, access to the internet. And uh, just do a Google search or Yahoo, whatever search engine you use, uh, and, and put in uh, iconoclasm or iconoclast heresy. Probably one of the first um, references that come up uh, will be from the Catholic Encyclopedia. Uh, it's a 10-page article. I printed it out, and uh, I used, I read it. Uh, it's nothing new. I've read it and studied it before. But most of this is really wrapped up in that heresy, which is iconoclasm, a misunderstanding, and sometimes a misunderstanding which, which uh, progressed into a violent hatred. Quite often, that's what happens when you misunderstand somebody else. And you don't want to do that. You want to try to be honest. You want to try to seek the truth, honestly. And the fact of the matter is, the Catholic Church doesn't worship idols. We use sense-perceptible signs to help us in our faith. It helps to raise your heart and your mind to God alone. And that's who we worship. And nothing else and no, nobody else. You know, there are people who say, oh, every time Catholics make the sign of the cross, they re-crucify Christ. Look, that's what comes under the theological classification of happy horse manure. Got it? That's what that is. That's baloney. Absolute baloney. They don't know anything about our religion, and I don't purport to know anything about theirs. I respect theirs. 
respect ours. When we make the sign of the cross, we are simply making a statement of faith. I believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and I believe in the sign of the cross because it's the sign of our salvation. That's very simple. So this is nothing new. Most of it comes from the iconoclast heresy. Nothing new. Uh, By the way, a lot of the origins of that, not all of the origins, but a lot of the origins of that are Muslim. The Muslims have an absolute hatred for any symbolism. They despise the human body. At least they did back in the the early centuries, uh, first ten centuries when we had clashes. Uh, with the Muslim empires. And, um, you know, that, that's where a lot of that came from. They wanted to destroy monasteries because they contained icons or, or, or crucifixes. They hated that. And it, that. That's based on misunderstanding. Well, it's worse than misunderstanding. When misunderstanding flows over it and becomes persecution and outright unmitigated hatred such that you're, you're cutting people's heads off and burning down monasteries and trying to destroy the relics of the church, that's where a lot of this comes from. Uh, It doesn't have its roots necessarily in Christianity, although there have been elements inside the church uh, that have gone wrong. There have always been been heresies, you know. Um, You know what a heresy is? I'm going to remind you. Most people, you know the word, but a heresy is a post-baptismal denial of some element of faith or morals that must be accepted with divine and Catholic faith or an obstinate doubt concerning same. Okay? This business of saying, oh, you worship a picture. No, we don't. No, we don't. Oh, well, what what do you believe? And then you tell them, and, and you should know your faith. Listen. A lot of the reason for the difficulties and outright horrible problems we have is because Catholics don't know their faith. You do not know how to argue these things. And you don't have to argue it, but just state it simply. Don't get in arguments. Say, no, 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 no. We don't worship. But most of all, you know, most of the time Catholics are just Speechless because they have no response. Well, it's not all your fault. Uh, You haven't been taught, right? You know, you haven't been taught these things in many cases. Some of you have who've taken the initiative to study your faith. But uh, it's very important that we become educated in our faith because a great host of evils flow from lack of proper education in the faith because you don't know. You hear some, oh, well, we must be terrible if we believe that. No, well, in the first place, we don't believe that. You know, a lot of mis- misunderstanding. Okay, so you understand what, what it is, what we're doing. We're making a sign, a symbol. When we make the sign of the cross, we're blessing ourselves. We're signing ourselves with the sign of the Most Holy Trinity and the cross. That's the sign of our salvation. Um, what does that do? That, that's a sacramental. Um, we are invoking innocence. We're invoking the power of God. Who's God? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are invoking the power of God. We are asking for the protection of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are asking for the protection and the grace and the power of the cross of Christ. When we cross ourselves, when the priest blesses people, what does he do? He makes the sign of the cross. May Almighty God bless you. I'm not blessing you. I don't have any power except that which God has given me. Uh, And and so the blessing is, I bless you in the name of the Father. I don't bless you in my name. I'm blessing you in God's name. May God bless you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm invoking the power of the Trinity and the power of redemption, and it's powerful. It is efficacious. The sign of the cross is a powerful weapon. You know, in the lexicon of uh, spiritual theology, 
uh, the sign of the cross is a sacramental. It is a weapon. Now, a soldier doesn't want to go out into battle unless he's well-armed. It would be foolhardy. Sign of the cross is one of those weapons that you can take against the enemy, and it's powerful. It's a powerful weapon against Satan and the fallen angels. Now, by the way, that's a doctrine of our faith. If you profess to be Catholic, but you don't believe in the existence and the activity of Satan and the fallen angels, then you are a heretic in plain English. Now, I know we are too polite today. We are too pseudo-sophisticated, too pseudo-educated to use the H word. But I will use it because it is necessary at times. It's not my favorite subject, but I've got to talk about it sometimes because, quite honestly, it is rampant in many places. So, the existence and the activity of the devil and the fallen angels, that's a doctrine of the faith. That's not optional teaching. You either believe it or you don't. If you don't, then you're a heretic. You have to believe what the church believes. And I'll tell you something. You know, there are all kind of pseudo-sophisticated, pseudo-educated people, even inside the Catholic Church, in teaching positions, who will say they don't believe in that. Well, you, you, see, you know where they are. I can go out in the street to any number of drug addicts, alcoholics, motorcycle gang members, and, and, and criminals, and ask them if they believe in the devil, and invariably they say, absolutely, they're well acquainted with him, and they believe. And very often, by the way, it's that belief in the power of evil that you can use to help elevate them to belief in God. But if somebody doesn't believe in the power of evil, very frequently they're just a hair away from believing in nothing. And so, the sign of the cross is a powerful weapon against evil, against the devil. Great saints throughout the history of the church, have professed that, ha have written about that. Their lives give witness to that. St. Anthony of the Desert, one of the great uh, early uh, hermits and monks of the church, um, he frequently used the sign of the cross to drive away the devil. He, he would be attacked even physically. Oh, don't worry, you're not going to get attacked physically. Uh, you're most likely not that evil or not that holy. And that's who gets attacked directly. I'm talking physically. You get attacked, though. You get attacked through temptation. You're going to be attacked emotionally. You're going to suffer terrible oppression. The effects of the combat of the enemy. Um, absolutely. Almost every human being suffers that at one time or another. But St. Anthony found that the sign of the cross... Now, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to give you... A, spiritual tip here. This is that you could include this into the into the spiritual directions kind of corner. Uh, it, when you're assaulted by temptation, it could be temptation against chastity. It could be a temptation of anger and hatred. One of the most powerful things you can do is just compose yourself for a second and, and just sign yourself. Make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You know, that, that, that's like putting armor on. I'm not saying that all your problems will instantly go away, but that you will be using a weapon. And if you use it with great faith, you know, being a sacramental, the power of it is, is proportional to your subjective belief. In other words, you have to believe. Uh, you can't just do it as, as perfunctory and routine. You've got to believe in it, and it's powerful. I've got plenty of experience with it, and I'll tell you something. It really is powerful against the enemy. When we make that sign of the cross, we are uniting ourselves with Jesus and Jesus crucified. You know, Jesus was many things. Jesus is many things. He's a, he's a teacher. You know, they called him rabbi, and rightly so. Uh, he's a ruler. He's a king, right? They right, put right up on the cross, you know. The king of the Jews, Pilate called him king of the Jews. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, king of the universe. So Jesus certainly, uh, he's a prophet too, the consummation of all prophecy. So he's all those things, but more than anything, he's a savior. 
And how did he save us? Through the cross, the power of the cross. And so when you make the sign of the cross, uh, when we bless things, uh, when we bless people, you know, parents, you can bless your children, you know. Oh, yeah. You, you can make the sign of the cross on their forehead. Oh, God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My grandmother used to do that to us kids before we'd go out quite frequently. That's an old custom. And it's not an empty custom. It's powerful. And you should do it. Use the sign of the cross. You know, don't be afraid to make the sign of the cross. Do it. We're uniting ourselves with Jesus and him crucified. You know, and then, oh, well, that, that's, uh, we're resurrection people. Yeah, how'd you get that way? You got that way through the crucifixion. There is no resurrection without the crucifixion. There is no Easter Sunday without the pain, darkness, and suffering of Good Friday. Good Friday always comes first on my liturgical calendar. So you're not going to have the resurrection without the crucifixion. They go together. You can't separate them. They are a strict unity. One mystery, the Paschal mystery. What's that? The passion, death, and resurrection of Christ and his ascension into glory. So when we make the sign of the cross, we're professing all that in, in, a, in a very concise synthesized, distilled kind of a way. You don't have to think of all those things, but you're making a statement in the universe. You're making a statement to all of creation. I believe in the Father and in the Son and in the Holy Spirit. I believe in Jesus and Him crucified. I believe in the power of the cross. That's what we do when we make the sign of the cross. That is our faith. If some other people in some other religion don't want to believe that or accept it, fine. That's their business. They belong to a different religion. But this is our religion. Oh, I could tell you a lot of stories about the cross and the sign of the cross. Um, throughout my vocational journey, throughout my ministry, uh, as a priest, I've encountered uh, um, many difficult situations. I've encountered people uh, struggling and suffering from many different things. I, I, I've been called to so-called haunted houses, you know, places, oh, ghosts live here. <clears throat> well, in the first place, there's no ghost, okay? There's no ghost, but there are spiritual realities. Okay? Uh, invariably, if there is a basis in fact to what they're saying, let's say a place is haunted, a place has problems, what they have is problems with the demonic. And I'm not sure how they got there. They could have gone there through, through uh, some kind of occult practices taking place there, some kind of terrible sin taking place there. Uh, there are all kinds of ways that a place can get infected by the power of evil. But one of the most powerful remedies is quite simply the sign of the cross. Now, I've talked to countless hundreds and thousands of people who have experienced the assaults of the enemy. Listen, this is not rocket science. One of the most powerful things you can do, you may be home alone one night. You may suddenly feel very fearful for no apparent reason. You may suddenly feel that evil surrounds you. Make the sign of the cross. Powerful. I remember one time in the course of my ministry many years ago, there was a woman who uh, uh, came to me in the days when I, I had time and was able to minister in that fashion. Uh, she said, I think I have problems with the devil. Now, you, you don't always, you hear that a lot. But quite often it can be just, can be their imagination. Uh, they could have an emotional problem, but I do not discount it. Here's a good rule. Neither be cynical nor credulous. Uh, preternatural reality is reality in, in, indeed. The existence and activity of the angels and the fallen angels, that's part of reality. Anyway, I, I met with her uh, in the residence of a certain chaplain in a certain religious place, and um, she began to say, oh, yeah, she was, a, by the way, a practicing 
Catholic, going to Mass, receiving the sacrament. During the course of that, it, it was amazing, something right out of a movie. Um, an, an unnatural light came up into her eyes. The room got icy cold, and it was like electricity charged the air. And she looked at me with an evil grin. Do you feel that? She said, and she started to take her clothes off. And I said, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And she fell over, flat on the ground, and began to convulse violently. Long and the short of the story, the difficulties she'd had for years, what she'd been plagued with for years, and all kinds of symptoms of the demonic left her and never returned. That is the power of the cross. That's the sign of the cross, my friends. So use it and be confident in it because that is our faith. God love you. God bless you. And goodbye.